Okay. All right, as I was asked, we talk about names of demon spirits. One thing I do want to mention is I'm not going to be glorifying Satan. I don't want to. But we need to become aware of the dark kingdom and how it operates around us. So let's go into a little bit of prayer, and I'll just say, Gracious Father in heaven, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for the joy of this colder weather. We know that the even good comes out of that. Lord, we thank you for wisdom, the knowledge, discernment, direction, also in conviction. We ask, dear Lord, that you please help us to understand these things today that we're studying about. I call upon the blood of the Lamb to cover each and every one of us, a wall of fire to surround each and every one of us, and the warring angels that stand guard over each and, any, and, each and every one. And we also say, all powers of the dark kingdom, we come against you in the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. For what we are teaching today, you will not use it to manifest it into anybody else. We bind you, we rebuke you, and we call you out right now and command you to go to the feet of Jesus. It is done. It is finished. Lord, have mercy on us in direction and in conviction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To talk about the principalities, which I'm going to be covering a lot of today, principalities are actually five demonic spirits. The head demon is Satan himself. But I'd like to read a verse out of Ephesians chapter 6. Contrary to people who don't believe that demon spirits exist today or that we shouldn't talk about these things, the Bible explicitly does talk about it. <laughs> you know, if we're being a person that says, well, if it doesn't say it in black and white, then we got a problem. We have to read scripture to understand it, to discern it. It says in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of this, or of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, be stand. You know, when, when the Apostle Paul wrote that, he knew <clears throat> that the dark kingdom is going to be around us no matter what. He knew that we're going to have to wrestle against because he says that we will wrestle against him. We are going to come up against him, that we are going to have to stand up against this evil. We live in a three-dimensional world. The fourth dimension is time. The fifth dimension is what we can't see. So we have to understand that Satan has a, a government, too, up in the second heaven. <clears throat> and that government is busy working. Now, I have a book here called Mysterious Secrets of the Dark Kingdom, which... He, JP, Pastor J.P. Timmons does a marvelous job of breaking it down about the principalities. And the first one we're going to look at, and the, and the chart that I have, is um, it's four principalities and Satan's over him. Then we have eight minor principalities that work with the upper principality. And in the first one, as we were talking about, names of demon spirits of the principalities is um, first one is Astaroth which Astaroth uh, is uh, I'm just trying to see is in charge of all natural religions and what we call paganism everywhere in the world where they uh, where they celebrate crop festivals which is mo in most countries did you know that we celebrate crop festivals here in this country <clears throat> it's in the fall during time of Halloween she is behind it she also delights herself in crop sacrifices from the people uh, you can see that she uh, asserts a position and wanting to be worshipped for providing food to humans so that's so in Astra she wants to be worshipped in fact, all the principalities want to be worshipped. Let's go on. The next one is called Baal. And come on, that's like work. <laughs> okay, Baal. Baal is the power who uh, who were, who was worshipped by the Canaanite god. 
He is the bull god and is responsible by all, or by a bull. I'm sorry, I misread something. He is represented by a bull in his normal appearance. He is half man and half bull. Um, you know, it's kind of strange because people say that, well, those things can't exist. <laughs> but in the book of Revelation, we see where it says about, um, in Revelation chapter 9, it talks of a beast coming out of the earth that has a body like a horse, a head like a man, and a tail like a scorpion. Okay, Baal is also responsible for alcohol. He likes to use tobacco, hallucinatory drug, sex, murder, pride, to control his victims. The original use of drugs was in religious worship and still is throughout most of the pagan world today. So Baal worship, one of the symbols we have in this country of Baal worship is the obelisk. Washington, D.C. has the Washington Monument obelisk. Beelzebub. Now, if you remember scripture, reading a scripture, Jesus talked about Beelzebub. They accused him of being a worshiper of Beelzebub. The word Beelzebub means uh, God of the dunghill, which is a cesspool, an outhouse, septic tank. That's what it really means. Beelzebub is in charge of collecting the blood sacrifices made to Satan. Like all the higher demons, he feeds only on human blood. Wherever it, okay, whenever a witch or wizard kills a person through uh, witchcraft, in our ministry we call it remote control or occult means. The blood is taken to the spiritual witch coven where it is transferred to the higher witches. <clears throat> so we see that Beelzebub is, in, is involved in blood sacrifices. We got Ariton, or A-R-I-T-O-N. I have a hard time pronouncing names at times. This power is in charge of all demons and agents involved with magical powers. It can be appealed to whenever one wishes to gain more original power. Now, I'm not suggesting people to go looking for this. We can read about it, but, you know, anytime if someone turns to Satan because they want this power, it always comes with a cost. It's much better to be with Jesus than the other end. Um, okay, next one. Well, let me read this little part here. For example, if that if there was a conflict or even a war between two villages or groups of people, and you get to the war front with this charm you on you, it will make you invisible. If you then draw closer to the enemy territory and strike the ground with the charm, three times saying appropriate, I'm not going to even pronounce the words. Also, immediately all types of banana and plantation trees will sprout out from nowhere. See, again, we're dealing with something that's more powerful than us. And let's go on. The next one is polymen. Or, yeah, pale men. This power is also the one who, who will pretend to be the voice of God to fool people. Before I go on further there, how often we have met people that are in ministries, multi-millionaire people. They claim to know the word of God, and yet there's always a question behind it. Something doesn't feel right. Have anybody ever run into that with anyone? Oh, yeah. Hey, Joe, what was that last demon that you mentioned that uh, gives the false gifts or whatever? What was the name of that? Uh, let me turn my page back. That was Ammon. A M A, no, Mammon. I'm sorry. Mammon. M A M M O N. I'm sorry. I gave you the wrong one. I'm sorry. That would be Araton. A R I T O N. And Leviathan, he's a, he's a good mimicker too, isn't he? Leviathan. Well, Leviathan, um, yeah, he's good. In fact, 
I'll mention this, that all demon spirits have the ability to shapeshift. Some of them have the ability to shapeshift into more than one character. It says that Satan has the ability to shapeshift over 900 different individuals. And principalities are very good at doing that. Uh -huh. So yeah, they can shapeshift into anything. And this is where we need to be careful in ministries or careful when we're working with people and doing deliverances. I've never had it happen to me. I know it has happened to other people where people will start shape-shifting or mimicking other things. It's very possible we can work with someone in ministry who's a fraud. And in reality, it's a shape-shifter and they're trying to deceive us. But we need to be careful there in ministries. Okay, let's go on. Oh, let's see. Uh, we were talking about the Indian reservations a few minutes ago on the telephone, Joe, and uh, I was out there. Yes. On, I was out there on the Hopi reservation, and uh, they were looking for a shapeshifter. The Indians were, and uh, mm -hmm. and when they find them, they kill them. You know, they they, they kill them. Um, but they were they were uh, looking for one right then. Uh, yeah. A friend of mine who works, well, he used to work for the Correctional Center, which is not very far from me. And he brought to my attention one day about, he saw a huge snake with glowing red eyes crawling through the building. I mean, this was not something little. Yeah. And that, apparently that snake was what they call a, I'm sorry, Joe, is a demonic spirit that has been released in that building. It's, um, I, there's a name for it, and I can't remember the name. But yeah, and under reservations, a lot has happened. In fact, even in non-reservations, things are starting to become obvious. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go on. Okay, as as Modi, this power is often called the stinking stinker by those who associate with him in the past. His appearance is that of a fat and smelly, demonic-looking man. His tall in stature and walked very lightly as a spring in his feet. He also possesses wings similar to those of Beelzebub. Aspadi is heavily involved with sexual immorality and he marries people for Satan. He is responsible for the spirit of Jezebel in the Bible and often works with Baal. So the principalities work together a lot, as we're seeing here. Now these here, we got, okay, we have, and I'm going further on, we got Magog. Now most of these demon spirits, I have found them in the Bible. Some of them I can't find. Okay, uh, Magog is an instrumental in controlling demons who cause anger and hate. He uses these servant spirits just as Asmodee does in marriage. Magog rules them to sit up, uh, set up fights or war. He normally works with uh, Belial. Together they like to see people possessed with what is called the triple spirit, anger, fear, and hate. <clears throat> okay, he's also responsible for bringing together homosexual marriages. But we see a lot of this taking place today. And these are the, you know, the main areas of the principalities. And I'm going to stop there for a little bit and just like to have some open dialogue on this. If anybody's got any questions or just a comment, go right ahead. Well, that, that stinking devil that you mentioned, Joe, now that's the one responsible for, uh, for the fags and all that. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> and we're seeing a lot of this. I was talking to Arthur earlier today, and I mentioned something to him about, or what maybe with you, Craig, that all over the world we're seeing sodomy just progressing heavenly all over the world today. Yeah. And I don't know if we can stop it. I don't think we can. I don't think we can, Joe. I don't, I don't, 
I don't see a big turnaround happening. I don't see it either. But there's an interesting verse in Revelation chapter 11. And I'd like to read that to you. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. And I really love this verse. <clears throat> Principalities, that's the government of Satan. That's the hierarchy. I just read most of it was from. And his kingdom, we can't see his kingdom. But Craig and anybody else who's ever worked with the deliverance ministry, we know that we come up against demonic kingdoms and individuals. But this verse here, I love this verse. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives, and they not, I'm sorry, and they loved not their lives unto the death. But we still know that even in these days, and we, even if things get worse, we can still overcome them by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. There's a lot of power in that blood. There's a lot of strength in that blood. <laughs> we know that we cannot see into that fifth, excuse me, <laughs> fifth dimension. We know that we can't even go there, but we know that it does exist. But these powers that I've been talking about here, these are the main characters. Now, we have associates who work with each one of these demonic spirits. And each one of these associates could be either one or many of them that work with one individual. And these powers, they are very strong, but they're only as strong as we allow them to be. And I'm talking more for ourselves, but they're very weak when we come against them in the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. And those powers will always be taken down. Arthur, you got any comments or anybody else? Hey, Greg, how are you doing? Hello, Pastor Johnny. Hey, I do have a quick question, maybe to put out to the panel real quick. I know you can't trust anything that a demon spirit tells you, like in a deliverance service or what have you. But I do have a right. question. Um, it's Joe, right? Yes. Okay. Joe, have you, have you come across a lot of principality spirits that, quote, unquote, are true principalities that you find in people? during deliverance times? Not always. What I found that the principalities normally don't possess people, but they have associate demons that work in conjunction with them that either possess, harass, or torment an individual. Right. <laughs> I, know sometimes, that, I know sometimes you come up against certain spirits that will claim to be one thing, and I think a lot of that is just to instill fear. And, um, yeah. you know, for example, they'll, they'll tell you who they are. And maybe many times I believe that what they're telling you is maybe what they represent, not so much who they are. But it's a, it's a big thing for fear. And I know that a lot of times when you come up against these things, of course, they'll tell you, you know, they're going to kill you and your family and everybody you know and all these kinds of things. But, you know, they like to, um, I don't know, I guess what the word is, they're, they're master bluffers in a lot of ways, especially if they're coming against you. They don't know who you are. And, um They've never come across you per se, and uh, you're in the middle of a deliverance service with an individual or a group of individuals. You know these things want to look like they're you know they they rule the roost, and um, but I've had a few people say they've come across principalities in people, and I just I'm wondering if like you're saying if maybe these things are just not lesser spirits that are on direct assignment from a principality. Well, normally they're on lesser assignments. There was a situation here a couple of years ago. I worked with a lady one-on-one, -on -one, and um, she actually claimed that she had a legion and Satan was a principality. Well, that's not possible. Satan cannot possess an individual. Satan will not. The day will come that he will possess one individual, and he will be called, you know, that will be in the end times. So... Yeah, the principalities normally don't possess an individual or less. There is a special assignment for that to happen, but it's always the lesser. But if you ever get into a situation where, you know, a demon spirit does manifest, there's a technique that I like to use called head demon technique. And you'd be surprised that the demon that you end up talking to, which you hold as your prisoner in the blood of the lamb, because you're going to interrogate him, 
many times it's not even the master demon or the head demon. It's always like one below him or two. And you have to challenge them. And you have to, and I have a way to force a demon to tell me the truth. They don't like it, but it does happen. And you have to challenge those demons. And I'm not a big one that likes to get into dialogue with them. But if it does happen, I know how to, and I can teach how to put them in a prisoner or war situation that you're my prisoner. I'm going to interrogate you in the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. The warring angels will not allow you to move. And I use the angels to force them to tell the truth. And like I said, I don't care to get into the dialogue with demon spirits, but it does happen. <clears throat> I have friends that that's the only way they do deliverances. And they're very good at it. They, they know better than getting into long dialogues. They just quick to be answered right now, yes or no. And uh, you can find where the curses are at, and you can have a deliverance done in a few minutes. Now, in a large setting, <laughs> that's really difficult to do. I've only done a few large groups of deliverances. And, I, you know, I have just a, just a general way of going about it, and I get very good results with it. But, yeah, if you go on a one-on-one -on -one and someone manifests, or if there's a manifestation of a demon in the group, it's best to take control over that one demonic spirit because he's been on assignment to disrupt the entire service. He's going to go and do his best to keep it from happening. Plus, when you kick a demon out, there's only one place for him to go. And um, I won't want to go there. My wife's been there one time with her testimony of hell, and I do not want to go there. They don't either, because they know that they're sealed. Then they lost the authority in their position. Does that help answer your question? It does. Joe, share with us, if you will, what exactly you do as far as bringing that, um, I guess, that ruling spirit to the front, bringing that that spirit to the front for judgment whenever you're in the middle of a one-on-one -on -one deliverance session. Because, like you said, many times they're going to put the lesser spirits up. I notice that Jezebel's really good with that is putting something else up in front of, um, you know, I hate to say the word she but or her, but uh, putting something else up in front of it so that whenever the command is given that something's got to go, uh, she's usually a champ at throwing out her, her little eunuch spirits um, ahead of her. So what is it that you do, uh, per se, to, to drive the uh, strong man, per se, to the front? Well, if I suspect, which I always do anyways, that demon spirits are so arrogant, they'll lie anyways. I will call on, and I will look at the individual as, you know, this progresses. And I'll just say to the individual, if this demon spirit is lying, that the warring angels will jab this demon five times. You can watch that person literally being jabbed. It's not harmful to the individual that has the problem, but the demon spirit that's possessing that person the warring angel goes in and literally jabs him with his sword, and that person literally flinches that many times. Well, that gets the demon spirit's attention. Now, when that happens, you tell him, I want to talk to the gatekeeper. I want the head demon up right now. And if he says he's a head demon, again, do it. You know, just call the warring angels to do what they need to do until it does transpire. I had one problem one night with a lady that I ended up decapitating a leg and an arm off of a demon spirit before he finally started giving in. And, you know, the demon spirits, they know that we have authority, as Luke 10, uh, yeah, 10, 19 says, Behold, they give you all power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. They know that we have that authority. Because Christ gave that to us. So when we use, you know, techniques such as what I've been describing, they, they have to do nothing but to submit. Now, there's times that you'll get a demon talking to someone, and you put them under authority, and you take complete control of them. You ask them, how many warring angels do you see? That individual probably a point, because that's what the demon's going to do, because they are physically a part of their body. They are their emotions, they are their intestines, they are their heart, they are everything to that person. And that person's probably going to point somewhere above or to the side and say, there's the ugliest warring angel I see right now. And you tell that demon spirit that if he doesn't submit, 
that ugliest warring angel that, that he just pointed to will be released on them. <laughs> so we have that authority to take, you know, to bring up the master demon. Personally, I don't like doing a type of a deliverance if I don't have to, but if it does happen, you know, these are things that we need to know what to do on the head demon technique and to bring them forward with a Jezebel spirit. Sometimes we might not be dealing with a Jezebel. We might be dealing with a Delilah spirit. But it's very easy for us to misinterpret which those demons are. The Jezebel spirit, she's very, very good at deception, incredibly good at deception with words, manipulation, and control. The Delilah spirit is very good in many of the same ways, but even though she shares something that the uh, Jezebel shares, Jezebel uses sex to take down her enemies with control. Well, Delilah spirit uses sex to control her enemies and eventually to take down even possibly a whole church. This is why pastors fall into the temptation of sexual activities with other than their wives in the church. A lot of times it's caused by a Delilah spirit. But getting back to your question on that, yeah, we, we have that authority. If it comes up, if it's manifestation of a demon spirit through a person, just tell them right to their face in the name of Jesus Christ. You are my prisoner of war. I hold you in ward. You will not go anywhere right now or, you know, because of the blood of the lamb is present and you have no more authority. And he can't go anywhere unless you release him. And then again, you start interrogating them. You don't want to get into mile long dialogues with them because they're always going to lie to you. They're incapable of telling the truth. Even in Matthew chapter 4, when the demon spirit tempted Jesus in the wilderness, <laughs> he deliberately misquoted some verses. So you got to remember, they will always, always lie to you. You got to force them to tell the truth. And that's where we have the power of the warring angels. Again, like I said, and I hope I'm not repeating too much, we can ask the warring angels because we can't demand or command the warring angels, but in the authority of Jesus Christ, we can use warring angels to say, pierce this demon spirit five times. And when we do that, they don't like being pierced. You eventually force them to tell the truth. Another way of doing this, is which I, is one way I love to do it, is that when I start the deliverance, I always go into prayer. And if I have to go into spiritual warfare, which I do every time, I tell the demon spirits in that person that right now we're standing in the throne room of God. All of us are in that throne room of God, and you will be forced to tell the truth. And normally they end up telling the truth there in the throne room of God. Because right now they're in a position where they're begging for their lives because they know that they got caught, they're in trouble. They know their sentence is death. So they're going to do everything to keep from being sentenced, which doesn't work. But it does happen. Does that help you, James? That's a great answer. I was just, I was just curious. I, I know a lot of people. That that seems to be a common question I get asked from time to time, and um, was just curious. And I, I know that others may have had the similar, you know, questions or concerns. And it's just always good to hear what others are doing and find out that when you find people that do deliverance on a uh, fairly regular basis, it seems that the Holy Spirit seems to lead everyone to some centralized um, processes of doing doing the warfare. Well, that's true, and it's like the one time that I ended up doing a head demon technique. I'd never done one before. It's just like it was a whole weekend, and I just, you know, it was a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I did a lot of deliverances that week, and I did even one group deliverance, and I had no peace about myself until that night gathering at City Church in Oklahoma City. <laughs> and I worked with this woman and all of a sudden her right leg shot on pain and like the Holy Spirit took my words and said, I said, demon come forth. And all I heard was, what do you want? And right there I went into the, uh, using the head demon technique, never used it before. But I, I, you know, it's not one that I enjoy using, but if it happens, I'm going to do it to my fullest extent. I like taking them to the throne room. That way they, they can't deny you know, in Job chapter 2, it says the sons of God and Satan himself appeared before God. Well, when we take them to the throne room, we're forcing them to appear before God, the Father. 
All right. Any other, is that good for you, James? All right. Hey, Anybody Joe, else have any questions? Hey, Joe, I know whenever, yeah, go ahead. I know whenever we command them out, you know, Jesus tells them to go dry places, the pit or whatever. But can, uh, can God absolutely destroy the existence? Kaput doesn't exist anymore. Can can he do that with a demon? You know, uh, just absolutely destroy it. When we cast a demon out, there's only one place for him to go. Yeah. And that is the lowest abyss of hell. That's yeah, where but, they go. Yeah, but I mean, can God remove their existence period they don't exist no more no heaven no hell no dry places just you're destroyed can god yeah, that, that, uh, yeah that's a good question but i'm not sure if that does happen or if it doesn't happen i mean it's just something i'm not clear on i know this that from some articles i've read that if there's a wall of fire yeah around an individual demons know if they touch that water fire that it will disintegrate them uh, yeah, it's possible. Maybe, maybe it is. Um, not something I'm clear on. It's something I would have to pray about and ask God. And then, <laughs> I mean, I just let him. You know, I just give them over to the Lord, and He just deals with them. Yeah, that was a little off so, topic. I was just curious about it. <laughs> Craig, I've got a, I've got a comment I'd like to make on that question uh, sure. that came actually from a friend of mine. Um, he's been in deliverance ministry. He was actually one of the uh, a minister that trained me several years ago in, in deliverance. Um, he, he ran across a spirit one time in an individual, and it was a spirit of pedophilia. And um, I can't remember the entire circumstances surrounding the deliverance, so forgive me there. But I do remember he said that whenever this thing manifested up and talked to him, he said he had never felt the just like he said he like something somebody just laid a blanket of filth over the room when this thing manifested up anyway this thing was boastful about the things that it had done to you know i guess to children or whoever and um anyway my friend johns he said he said that it, he was so compelled in his spirit that he wanted this thing destroyed he got down on his knees and asked the father to not just make this thing go to uh, to hell or the pit, he asked the father to destroy this thing. And he said the fear that came upon this spirit after he did that was absolutely unlike anything he had ever seen. Now, I don't know the, the outcome. Like he said, I don't, he didn't know the outcome. He just knows that he prayed and asked the father to completely incinerate and destroy this creature because of what it had done. And uh, he says, I'm just going to believe God answered the prayer very possible so i don't know if there's any validity to that he just said that's all i can give testimony to mm -hmm. well i do know that as we're casting the demons out i usually send them to the feet of jesus for the judgment but i do know that that judgment is the abyss i worked with a man here about five years ago from new york he came he eight hours to my home and it was four and a half hours of deliverance and just working with him. I literally watched demon spirits pick this man up out of a chair and put him on the floor. I've watched him come out of a chair. And the authority of Jesus, I said, sit down. And the man sat down and he was like glued to the chair. He could barely move. And when I hit the demons, his face was literally rolling. His skin was rolling. This is how many mental illness demons he had in him. <clears throat> and there were a lot of power. I mean, because I sensed that right then, as I was working with him, there was a spirit that came over me that's saying, he's ready to harm you. Now, usually I take authority over that at the very beginning. But he had very intentions of harming my wife and me both and causing us harm. But after four and a half hours, that man was as humble as a kid. Now, you'll get demon spirits when you're working in a deliverance that will literally tell the person you're working with, you're going to have a heart attack or you're going to die. And we have demons that will do that all the time. <laughs> or they'll start telling them things in them or in their mind. And then they just get to the point where I feel like I'm dying. I get, you know, all this pressure in my chest. Well, this demon spirit put pressure on it. Or the gut gets so tight, so bound up that, you know, they can't. Well, 
if they're feeling demons in their abdomen, that's a sexual demon. If they're feeling in a chest, that's a demon spirit of hate. If they're feeling in their neck, it's because of words that they speak. And this demon's moving around. What I do is I tell a person, take your hand, lay it right on that where you feel that. Curl it like a fist. And we go into a short prayer, and I said, now pull that demon out. And they helped me a lot. And they pull it out, and I said, now cast it to the feet of Jesus. And they'll sit there and look at me with the biggest smile. Because that demon lost its authority. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, we have that authority to do that. But where they go, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know where they go. Other than the abyss. But. God has given that authority and that power to do that. Now, is there any other questions or anybody want to dialogue? No. All right, let's go on. All right. Demon spirits, as I read these principalities off, the high principalities and the lower principalities, they mainly don't possess people. The, the upper principalities of Satan, Apollyon, Abaddon, Belial, and the beast, these are what they call ruler demons. They are rulers over regions, or they have a high authority in that second kingdom, or in Satan's kingdom. They're part of his government. The lower class demons, or what we call the powers, from the principalities down to the powers is Astaroth, Harimon, Haritan, Baal, Beelzebub, Mammon, Magog, and Aspody. These demons have associates that work under them. And they either could be one or many. These are the ones that usually take authority in a person's life. <laughs> and these demons pretty much answer to the lower powers and because they do they um are pretty good at masquerading now i know some of you have done deliverances let me ask this question has anybody ever come up against what's called a demonic kingdom in a person craig have you James? No, I don't. I don't think so, Jeff or uh, Joe. Okay. Demonic kingdom through these lower powers. They have your gatekeeper. They let the demons in and out of the person, and they have to ask permission. Usually, we're the one that gives them permission. <laughs> Now, when we're dealing and casting out one demon, there's going to be more than just one. On an average, when I do a deliverance, I can find it's anywhere between 12 uh, to three dozen demon spirits. A lot of times in Christians, you're either on, around them, or in them. So the kingdom, the demonic kingdom is on assignment. A lot of times we can cast a demon out but there's always it might be an associate there that went into went dormant and we have to try to find where that dormant demon is. Because he'll lay there for years and wait for something little to come in or maybe a temptation that we come into agreement with and all of a sudden the kingdoms are reopened. <laughs> so when we let those out, then we have to go after other than a head demon. In fact, I'll tell you this. If you can take the head demon spirit down in a person, the other demons don't have any power. In fact, if you take out a second lieutenant in a platoon in the time of active war, the rest of the platoon is very weak because they're not sure what to do. And we go from there, taking out the demonic kingdom, again, you may have to end up into a head demonic, I mean a head demon, um, looking for the head demon, and then trying to find the other ones below him. It's not always easy, but then again, I'm not one that usually does that type of technique. 
pretty good at finding most of the ones that I want to get out. I like all of them. Okay. Now, let me ask this question. Those of us who do deliverance ministry, do we come up against opposition in the church? Absolutely. What opposition have you yes. run into? Now, do you hear things like, uh, well, since Jesus died on the cross, he did away with all that stuff? Or light and dark can't mix? Or when Jesus died on the cross, he destroyed Satan's kingdom and he's in hell right now? Or do you hear things like, well, if we talk about this, we're not glorifying Jesus, we're glorifying demons? <laughs> hey, Joe. I mean, he's, Joe. Yes. Tracy has a question. Um, yes, Tracy. She says uh, she can't talk, so I'm going to read it. Um, have you found that the demons have tables, banners, scrolls, and cups? They have tools that they use in those individuals, such as headaches. They can put a, you, know, you can't see it, like I'm saying, it's the fifth dimension. You can't see it. They'll put a vice on your head, and they'll turn it and squeeze your head to where it hurts horribly. Hooks, pins, and needles causing arthritis. Or other things like muscle ache. <coughs> they use ribbons to uh, <coughs> deceive people, such like in homosexuality. They'll use ribbons around that person to get them to an effeminate state. They will use spears to attack the person, sudden pain. There's times that when people come for deliverance and they said, I've been to the doctor. I can't, they can't find nothing wrong with me, but yet I have this horrible abdomen pain or I got this horrible chest pain, but my heart is no problems with my heart. You know, and these are demonic spirits using their own tools to cause pressure on people to cause problems. Again, we have to go in and pull those tools out, too, if we can find them. Yeah, and Which how do you pull not. those tools out? Well, one way is take, by laying that hand, have the individual lay the hand right on that spot, and you say, in the name of Jesus, in the blood of the Lamb, I'm pulling you out right now, and I'm casting to defeat of Jesus. That's where they get relief. Sometimes I'll have them lay a Bible on them. And I'll say things, you know, I would say demon spirit. Right now, we're laying the Bible on the chest. The Bible is not the sword of God, but what's written in those pages is. And that sword we command right now to pierce you and to remove. And there again, we're using the word of God to remove it. See, the authority is ours. <laughs> A lot of times when I'm done with the deliverance, I'll release the warring angels to go in and just clean house. Just purge out. Amen. But a lot of times, too, we will see things. And one thing, you know, and I think all of us who know about deliverance, we will always tell the participant, when you go home, go in your house, house clean your house. You got horror movies sitting there. You got books that you shouldn't be reading that don't glorify Jesus, but are mystical. Get rid of those. Harry Potter movies, get rid of that junk. Um, <clears throat> anything that belongs to the Masonic Lodge, yeah, definitely get that out of your house. Burn it. Photographs of people, photographs of people that, well, I'll give an example. I had a gal come to me here a couple of years ago. A lot of headaches. I mean, she just had headaches that just bring her to tears. And she said, I found this photograph of a friend of mine who I know was a witch. Because we already started getting into deliverance. Some people you can't just do one sitting. And I have this picture here. This girl I know is a witch, a literal witch. And I'm getting these headaches. And every time I look at this picture and think of it, I got these headaches. I said, rip the picture up. And she ripped it up. We rebuked the demon spirit behind that. And she threw it in the garbage and the headache immediately went away. It was just gone that fast. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and that was connected to an ungodly soul tie as well. So when you break that tie... Then you have, again, in fact, when I do deliverance, 
the first thing I do is breaking ungodly soul ties. Because I, I want to make sure there is forgiveness taking place. Because if you're doing a deliverance and that person's harboring unforgiveness, you're not going to get anywhere. You go so far and then it's just going to come to a, a just you're going to hit a wall and you can't get past that wall. So yeah, those little things of having those things around, yeah, that, that's going to be a problem. It, it's going to be an attack on you. Again, you know, we're looking at principalities and powers, powers and all the associates involved in it. They're going to put objects in your way. They're going to put things inside you that don't belong there. They're going to put vices on your head. They're going to put nooses around your neck. Yeah, they have tools that they use. Do you know the warring angels have tools that they use too? It's called a shield and a sword and a buckler. They also have chariots. And they love to run demons down with those chariots. So, okay. Is there any other questions? Joe, I would like to say something about bringing things into your home. Uh, a friend of yeah. mine was a deliverance minister. His wife bought him a birthday gift uh, one year, and it was a uh, ornamental cross that she had bought at a local Christian store, brought it home. <clears throat> Immediately upon having it in the house, she took it and wrapped it up and uh, put it away in the closet for a few days. Well, he started having problems in his home. And so he was just sitting in his living room and he said, Lord, is there something in the house? Is something come in the house that I'm unaware of? You know, something that could have come in the mail or anything like that. And um, the Lord told him that his house was, undef was defiled. Well, come to find out this cross had been built or made in some um, Muslim country. And they had actually, he said the Lord showed him that they had actually made the cross and placed a curse on the object knowing that a Christian would buy it and put it in their home. Yes. So he yeah, just, um, he anointed the cross with oil and broke the curse off the cross and uh, claimed the cross for the, you know, for his home and, and, and ran the spirit off. But he said, how many times in his life as an early young Christian, he said that I had trouble in my home and I had no idea to think to look for something of that nature. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> I remember a story of a, I read about a pastor that, a witch came into their church. No one knew it. And she started giving gifts to people. And within six months, the church closed the doors. And it was a big ministry. One person did. In fact, I'll say this. Anytime that somebody gives you a gift, especially if you don't know who they are, <laughs> always call upon the blood of the lamb to cover it, to break any curses that may be associated with it. I remember a friend of mine working with somebody that, had deliverance, but all of a sudden she came into curses again, and she didn't know why. Well, it was a black woman, and what she did is she bought these, like, braided hair pieces that she put in her hair. Well, they came from India. Wow. And, yeah, and as soon as they pulled, took the braids out of her hair, the curse lifted off of her. So, yeah, Satan does use even physical objects to take people down. And he can do a lot of damage and destruction that way. Yeah, anytime somebody gives us a gift, you know, always just, I call upon the blood of the Lamb to cover this. And if there's any curses associated with it, I break that curse now in the name of Jesus. I mean, I've gotten to commonplace with that. If anybody gives me anything, that's what I do. Now, yes, we can buy things such as that cross. And where it came from, it very easily could have cursed it. That very easily could take control of our lives as well. <clears throat> Any other comments or dialogue? People, I love dialogue. I have a question. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's just, uh, you know, maybe you can give me a word of wisdom. I, um, I have gotten a lot of deliverance in this year, actually, and recently um, I started praying to bind demonic gatekeepers and watcher spirits and asking the Lord to um, heal my mind um, from any trauma or demonic programming or anything from 
like my childhood and stuff like that. Well, I've seen God move, but lately I've been having like uh, really bad dreams. And even last night I had a dream about, it, it looked like a female and a male, but they looked the same, but one had hair and the other didn't. And when I looked at them, I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to manifest and go. And then I started speaking in tongues and they were mimicking me. And then I woke up and I was like, okay, I, I, I just been having weird dreams like that. So when I wake up, I just come out of agreement with that. So is there well, anything? Me, go ahead. Yeah. Let me ask you, have you had dreams of like families? Or, and I hate to use the word sexual dreams. Have you had anything like that? Um, yeah, but that's when I got, in July of this year, I got delivered from the spirit of Legion. So that was during that time. Are, are, you, are, are these dreams still coming back? No, not sexual. It's mainly like um, seeing, um, yeah, I do see certain people, um, some people, I don't even know them. And some people are like my ex-husband, which I have broken the soul tie, got rid of everything. Um, and, you know, I've broken soul ties with every demonic person, place or thing. And that's daily, you know, that I do any agreement with any lie or anything. I do that daily. Um, but I'll have dreams of, you know, just seeing people or, um, recently I had a dream that I was going to eat a donut and inside the donut was a bunch of flies and I was just like grossed out. It was weird. Those are weird dreams. Hey, you, you've come under one of the principalities and there are so just connected to it. A lot of times, and I, this even happens to me, even the best of us, you know, I find myself still sometimes coming under some de demonic influence. Something comes up like when I'm praying. And when I was praying, I saw these weird visions taking place. And there was something going on. And I finally had to keep using the blood of the lamb to uh, come against these things. The reason why I ask you about if you saw like family there or friends or, you know, like happy things. A lot of times that's still associated to what they call a, a spirit spouse. And they okay, could what was that called again? A spirit spouse. Oh, like an incubus, succubus? Yeah, I've prayed against that like a whole lot. And um, then the Lord had me um, pray against any spiritual uh, children from my ex. Like, it was weird because my ex was uh, operating in witchcraft. And um, the Lord said, uh, uh, you know, I came against it in the spirit realm. I divorced myself from all of that um, and, and broke any soul ties with any uh, spirit child or I don't know. I have all of this written down, but I have gone into, um, you know, some warfare. Well, I'd like you to try to do something. I'd like you to say, gracious father in heaven. Gracious father of heaven. I love you. I love you, Lord. Any demonic spirits coming against me now? Any demonic spirits coming against me now? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Any covenant? Any covenant? Oaths? Oaths? Or pact that I have made? Or pact that I have made. That may be associated to these demonic dreams. That may be associated to these demonic dreams. I break them now in the name of Jesus. I break them now in the name of Jesus. I cancel all power. I cancel all power. Curses and assignments. Curses and assignments. And authority. An authority off my body. Off my body. I no longer will come into agreement with them. I no longer will come into agreement with them. 
And I choose now to walk with Jesus. And I choose now to walk with Jesus. I'd also like to add this. I rescind any and all rights off my body. <laughs> I rescind. Are you still there? Hello. I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Like say, okay. I, re I, re I rescind I all rights off my body. I all rights all off. rights off my body. And I give my rights to Jesus. And I give my rights to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'd like you to, oh, yeah, I'd like you to say no longer. No longer. Will I allow you to come back? Will I allow you to come back? To transfer? To transfer? Or send any back in your place? Or send any back in your place? I command you now. I command you now. To go to the feet of Jesus for your judgment. To go to the feet of Jesus for your judgment. Never to return. Never to return. And I'm going to add this. Gracious Father, you heard her covenant with you. Yes. She's broke the covenant with Satan and these demonic dreams that are coming at her. Yes. We don't know the source, Lord, but we know that it is of the dark kingdom. We thank you, Lord, now for all demon spirits that was connected to this and the authority of Jesus Christ up and out right now. Go. Do not come back. Do not transfer or send any back in your place. Go. Now, up and out, up and out, up and out in the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. All four Katie spirits, all spirits of lies or deception that's trying to come against her, go. Now, all demon spirits of anger and witchcraft, up and out. Now, go in the name of Jesus. Do not come back in the authority of Jesus Christ. It is done. It is finished. How do you feel, sister? I feel a lot of heat on my head. <laughs> like you put your hand on your head. Yes. I'd like you to say, Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. I lay all my sins. I lay all my sins. Or torments. Or torments. At your feet. At your feet. To be covered by the blood of the Lamb. To be covered by the blood of the Lamb. I'd like you to take your hand, like you're pulling something out of your head, and I'd like you to say, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Demon spirit causing this heat in my head. Demon spirit causing this heat in my head. I'm pulling you out right now. Now pull them out. I'm pull pulling. Out. I'm pulling you out right now. And throw them <laughs> to the feet of Jesus for judgment. Go. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'd like you to. I'd like you to take a moment and just worship the Lord. Just, just for a few seconds. Just go ahead and worship. Thank you, Father God, for your amazing anointment, your healing balm. Thank you, Father God, for your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you that deliverance is your children's bread. I praise you. Thank you, Lord, that you're always on time and you hear my prayers, Father God. And you'll never leave us or forsake us, Father. We worship you, King Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. My master, King Jesus. I have one question to ask you. Yes, sir. Have you ever, have you ever at one time, and this is just going through my, I just feel this in my spirit. Have you ever at one time had an abortion or supported someone to have an abortion? I actually, um, I had, the Lord was showing me, um, I had a vision a while back of, of the Lord showing me different things that my mom and my grandmother did to me as a child of witchcraft. And um, during that whole week, the Lord had me repent of the sins committed in generational from my, my uh, parents' side. 
on both of their sides of abortion. And I also had to repent of that. Okay. So you never had a personal abortion yourself? Yes, right? I did. Yes, there was two. One thing about abortion, it really brings in the bail spirit heavily. And I know that you probably, and I feel in my spirit, you ask God to forgive you, and there has been forgiveness. But I'd like to take you into something deeper that will bring you more peace in your life. Do you know what sex the child was? No. Okay, let's just think for a moment. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what sex okay, if can it was you male hear or female. Me? Yes, I can. Okay, you, you broke up. I'm sorry. I'd like you to just okay. think Go for ahead. a moment. I... As the Holy Spirit speaks to you, if it was a male or a female. Of what? The aborted child. Um, I believe there was one male and one female. I'd like you to give them both a name. Cause... Just think of a name for the for you know both of them, because this is where the healing is going to really take place. I heard it, and it said, "These are the children playing in my place," and. This is their teacher, and the, he she teaches them Hebrew. And the kids were rejoicing, and then I only saw two names. I saw a boy name and a girl name. So okay. I've, you know, I've cried a lot because of that, you know, the whole guilt and shame and all that. I went through that whole thing. What I'd like you to do is to hold your hand above your head. Okay. I'd like you to, like to say, Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know I've been forgiven. I know that I've been forgiven. But I know there's children in heaven today. But I know that there's children in heaven today. That have no names. That have no names. These are their names, dear Lord. These are their names, dear Lord. And I give them to you now. And I give them to you now. They belong to you, in Jesus' name. They belong to you, Lord Jesus. That's a lot of healing right there. A lot of deep healing. How are you feeling right now, sister? I just... I just want to cry. I want you to close your eyes. I'd like you to, I know you're holding a phone with one hand, and with the other hand, I'd like you to just, you're giving a hug. I'd like you to give Jesus a hug. And just say, Jesus, I love you. Just go ahead and do that, and just listen to the word. And let me know when you're ready to go on. Okay. Did you feel the presence of the Lord? I feel a lot of peace right now. Okay. Again, give Jesus a hug. Lay your head in his bosom. Say, Jesus, thank you. I love you. Let me know when you're ready to go on. I'm ready. Okay. Did the Lord speak to you? I just feel something in my throat. What do you feel? I feel anxious. <laughs> kind of like anxiety? Mm-hmm. Like you say, gracious father. Gracious father. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Forgive me of the sin of anxiety. Forgive me of the sin of anxiety. Or lay this sin at the feet of Jesus. I lay this sin at the feet of Jesus. Be covered by the blood of the Lamb. 
I cover it with the blood of the lamb. Please forgive me. Okay, I, I can't, I didn't hear you. I said, please forgive me, Lord. Lord. Can you hear me? I'd like you to say I can all hear you demons. Okay. I'd like you to say all, all demons. demons spirits in the sky. All, all demon, demon spirits. spirits and associates. Okay, and associates. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. No longer use these sins. No longer use these sins. To gain access to my life. To gain access to my life. I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. I choose to forgive myself. I choose to forgive myself. And all others in the name of Jesus. And all others in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to sit back and relax. We've come into agreement with this anxiety, correctly. So yes. I'd like you to sit and relax. All demon spirits and associates, in the name of, in the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, I counsel your power, your authority, your curses, and your assignments off of this sister. She no longer will come in agreement with her thoughts, which you try to make your thoughts be her thoughts. She will never come in agreement with that again. We rescind your rights off of her body, and we give those rights that she has to Jesus. She has duties, and those duties belong to Christ. We command you now in the name of Jesus Christ and the precious blood of the Lamb, the Holy Lamb of his for the past world, up and out right now, up and out, up and out, up and out, up and out, come on. Go now, go now, David. Come on, right now, the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. Go, go, go. Anxiety, mental illness, stress, tension, and pressure. Up and out, right now. Up and out, right now. As the up and out, right now. In Jesus' name. Up and out, right now. In the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. We release the warring angels. That if there's any good up there, that feels dormant. Up and out, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out. In the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. Go, go, go. Up and out, up and out, up and out. Come on. Down deep. Up and out right now. Anxious demons, up and out right now. Stress pressure demons, up and out. Idolatry demons, right now. Fornicating demons, go. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. And any demon that is attached to her children, up and out right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, up and out right now. Any demons that are trapped from her parents under her, up and out right now. All familiar spirits, right now, right now, right now, about right now, in the name of Jesus, in the heart of blood, Lamb of Jesus, go, 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 come back. We release the warring angels to clean up the rules and devices they have implanted in my sister here. It will be removed right now in the name of Jesus Christ as we stand in the throne room of God. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. go, go. In Jesus' name, so you curse us in your assignment. It is done. It is finished. He is covered in the blood lamb. My sister has the word of God in her shield in her heart and the seal of God in her forehead. Up and out right now, demons. Go. Do not come back. Do not turn. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Down, down now, demons. Up and out, warring angels. Escort them out right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, out, necessary for the word of God, uh, to hold against all power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the enemy. Nothing uh, by any means shall harm you. Come on, demons. Go. Now. Uh, it's done. It is finished. Power of love in the name of Jesus. It is done. It is finished. It is done. Uh, uh, the word of God says that I will be a wall of fire round about the sister, and I will be the glory in the midst of her. Uh, I cast out fear because fear has torment. Put out demons now. Go. The word of God also says, and these signs shall follow them who believe. They will cast out devils in my name, and they will speak with new tongues. And if we take up serpents with these devils, it shall not harm them. Go. Now. It is done. It is finished. We call on the word of the Lamb to cover it. We call on the word of God to be ingrained in it. All lying demon spirits, just get out now. All spirits of the lie, go now. Go. 
Go uh, all uh, Jezebel spirits or Delilah spirits up and out right now. Uh, up and out right now in the name uh, of Jesus. Warring angels, just purge her now in Jesus. Warring kingdom, your kingdom is no more. Master demon, we take you down now, Master Demon, now in the name of Jesus. Up and out, up and out, gatekeeper, you will not swing that gate anymore. And we call upon the Holy Ghost now to fill this individual in her voids. Now in Jesus. Fill all those voids. In Jesus. Now, now, come on. Let's go, demons. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the part of little Go. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You want to worship him for a minute? Give him some yes. praise. I'll yes. let you do that because I do have to take a quick break. But you go ahead and do that, and I'll be back in a minute. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. For his deliverance. For God, I praise you, Lord. Thank you for answering our, my prayers, Lord God. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I give you glory, Father. I just welcome your Holy Spirit, Lord, in this place. I welcome your Holy Spirit to fill me up in every area that you delivered me today from, Father. I worship you, Lord, and I give you all the glory and all the praise, Father. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How does it feel? I feel uh, how are you a lot lighter. That's a very common because demon spirits have weight. That's very common. Yeah, I have been, this is an answered prayer and I really do appreciate your time. I had been praying um, on my dad's, uh, the Holy Spirit was showing me things about my dad's side of the family. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, I started asking him to forgive the sins that my, my ancestors and my dad and, and my mom caused, um, for, uh, like emotional wreck, you know, like I see my dad's life now and it's like his emotions are like all over the place. And so were my mom and that's a generational curse, um, of right. not having no stability or balance. And so... I had been going into some intense war, uh, worship and asking the Lord to please forgive my parents of their sin that they allowed no uh, for no direction or no uh, direct uh, visions for their lives, you know. Well, and, I, I usually um, do that. Yeah. that. That is something I do when I'm dealing with familiar spirits and spirit guides with people. Is I have them ask God to forgive them as well. And it really helps a lot. Now, have yes. anybody ever done a inner healing with you? Um, like from the time of conception no. to this very moment? Let me ask, is no. how many people still we still have on? Okay. Let me ask if we're still on the line with everybody, because I heard a couple of people drop off. How many people do we still have there with okay. us? Craig. Seven. Seven. Craig? Seven. Seven. This yeah, is going to take it. I'm going to get ready and go, Joe. Joe. Yeah. I'm going to get ready and go, but I'll make uh, Angelica a uh, host so the room will stay open. Okay. I'm going to do some inner healing with this young lady. Yeah. And it, this is a good teaching tool. And the Holy Spirit reveals a lot of things to people. So if she doesn't object, if everybody else, you know, doing this, sister, do you object to this being done? No, I am totally cooperating with the Holy Spirit. I am not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. 
I mean, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> I need, I need, All right. I'm not embarrassed you know or what? any of that. If I could show my face, I would. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. You're a beautiful, wonderful person. And Thank that's you. the way the Lord sees you. It doesn't matter how ugly, fat, tall, skinny, or if you got a <laughs> nose as long as you're just a beautiful person. Okay, inner healing. What I'm doing here in inner healing is that I'm relying on the Holy Spirit to reveal things. And we're going to go from the moment of conception. How old are you now? I am thir um, 38. 38. And we're going to go all the way up to 38. Yes. Okay. 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 I'm going to go into a prayer. Then I'm going to ask you to pray and then I'm going to finish the prayer. And then we're going to go into the inner healing, relying on the Holy Spirit to reveal things to us. Gracious Father, we just thank you for okay. this time. We minister to this young lady. She's a beautiful person, Lord. She has a heart of gold. And we just pray, Lord, that the innerness of this person, what you meant her to be, will begin to manifest and rise above the ugliness that's been in her life all these years. Lord, we're asking in inner healing that many secrets and mysteries that she has pondered in her heart and hidden in her life will be revealed, that healing will take place. Sister, I'd like you to say, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. Please reveal those things to me. Please reveal those things to me. That has brought torment on me all these years. That has brought torment on me all these years. And I'm going to finish up. The Father, we just call now on the Holy Spirit to reveal these things. She is in agreement with this. We ask now, Lord, that the blood of the Lamb will cover her. We ask, Lord, that if you take us through a situation, that no harm will come upon her. And we ask that the warring angels stand guard over her and protect her and all that is taking place. And everything that comes out of her will not transfer to anywhere, but go to the abyss where it belongs. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's start. Let's, let's start at the moment of conception, the first three months of gestation. We're relying now on the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. Do you see anything there? <laughs> Anger and bitterness. Where is it coming from? Shame, rejection. My mother. Your mother? I'd like you to say, mm -hmm. I choose to forgive my mother in the name of Jesus. I choose to forgive my mother in the name of Jesus. Let's go from three months of gestation to six months of gestation. Hate. Is the Lord revealing anything to you? There was uh, There was molestation at that age. There was molestation. Mm -hmm. And what age was? It was a baby. How? Oh. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just see me as a baby. In a diaper. Okay. Do you have any idea who that might have been? No. So you don't know if it was a family member, a friend, or a relative? It's probably a family member. But you don't know exactly who it is? Mm-mm. I keep seeing my dad's face. Maybe it's my dad. I'd like you to say, I choose to forgive my dad in the name of Jesus. I choose to forgive my dad in the name of Jesus. And all sexual demons of slavery. And all sexual demons of slavery. That enter in through the molestation. That enter in through the molestation. I break this curse off my body. I break this curse off my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Feeling a lot lighter? 
Yeah, there's tears running down my eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Those are tears of joy. Tears of being released from the torment. And let, let's go up to, let's start going a little bit further now. Let's go from nine months old to 24 months. A lot of pain. What's causing the pain? My mother abandoned me and my dad when they left me just about. Are you, can you visualize this? Yeah, I remember my mom leaving me at a lady's house and her husband molested me. Okay. I'd like you to say, I choose to forgive my mom. I choose to forgive my mom. For the abandonment she had caused. <coughs> for the abandonment that she had caused. <coughs> and I choose now. And I choose now. To honor my mother and father. To honor my mother and father. Okay, let's go from 24 months to four years of age. There was a lot of rage. Can you just tell me anything about that rage? Can you think of one incident? And don't hold back what it is. I, mean, I want you to be exactly explicit. Of, so of the rage? Yes. Of the rage? Why? Yes. Why there was a lot of rage? There was a lot of rage because my mother was sleeping around with me and I would hear those things. I would hear the sex in the next room. Um, I was also um, feeling unloved and unwanted. You know, I, I didn't, it was like, I knew those things that she was doing was wrong. I knew um, her having affairs on my stepdad were, were wrong. You know, I knew those things were wrong, but I hated her for that. And so there was a lot of rage, a lot of resentment. I remember, uh, you're talking about four years old, right? Yes. So I remember not ever wanting to be with her at all. And that was a lot of anger. I like you to say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Forgive me of my anger. Forgive me of my anger. And I choose now to forgive my mother. And I choose now to forgive my mother. I also choose to forgive. I also choose to forgive all the men that came into our home. All the men that came into our home. For taking my mother away from me. For taking my mother away from me. When I needed her the most. When I needed her the most. Let's go on. Let's go four to six years old. Hey. Did you say a lot of pain? A lot of ang a, a lot of anger and hate. Um, a lot anger. of uh, anger and hate and rejection. What was it aimed at? Because hey, what, what was your I anger? I remember being at my family, at my whole family, everybody, like my parents. Well, my dad wasn't in my life at all anymore, but my mother, my grandmother, not so much my grandmother, but my mom's sister, she had 12 siblings. And I could feel the jealousy off of them and their children because out of all of those grandkids, my grandmother favored me. And because my grandmother favored me, um, 
everybody was jealous of me and um, they would make fun of me and tell me you're basically a bastard, you know, you're, you know, they just would say things like that to me, you know, they would tell me, you don't even know who your dad is. You know, and uh, they would say that I was stupid and they would say that, you know, just a bunch of trash. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's look at it this way. Your family, your siblings all teased you. Let me ask you, did you ever at that time feel that? Okay, what was that again? Did you ever feel anger towards God? No, because I didn't know who he was. Okay. I'd I like never, you to say to I didn't grow up um, in a Christian home. I grew up in, um, in there was, it was religion. It was Catholic, but we didn't go to church every Sunday. It was only to like, maybe a couple times out of the month to go light a candle or something like that. But I never, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Well, there's two things here. I'd like you to take your hand and put you above your head and say, Jesus. Jesus. My burdens are too heavy for me. My burdens are too heavy for me, Lord. They've gone over my head. They're gone overhead. And I can't not hold them anymore. I can't hold them anymore, Lord. Take them from me. Take them from me, Father. All the anger. I take all the anger. The bitterness and resentment. The bitterness and the resentment. And jealousy. And take away all the jealousy. That I've held all these years. That I've held all these years, Father. Please forgive me. Please <laughs> forgive me, Father. And I also choose to forgive my family in the name of Jesus. And I also choose to forgive my family in the name of Jesus. Good girl. I'm proud of you. I want to ask you a Thank question. You. Do you like sports yeah. or do you like doing activities like climbing or running or jogging or fishing? Okay. Do I like what? Do you like sport games or camping or jogging, fishing or hiking? <laughs> 